Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video and uh, interestingly it doesn't seem like there is a new clip or anything like that today. Now admittedly I say that I'll post this video and there'll probably be something posted just a bit later than they usually have posted things but um, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on and um, there was some interview stuff with the actors that I think came out like kind of last night earlier on but it's very basic interviews with like kind of television outlets and that sort of stuff beginning uh, but also because there is the premiere stuff happening tomorrow and over the next couple of days so the first I guess early impressions or reviews I'm guessing are going to come out at some point tomorrow. Admittedly, it's pretty late tomorrow, so it'll probably be more like Friday, uh, basically, for a lot of those impressions. Uh, and then, also, in case you missed it, it does seem like there's also a screening in Vancouver, Canada on Sunday. So, they seem to be getting episode one of the show out there for a few kind of public screenings ahead of time, so there's going to be some thoughts out there, at least on that first episode. So, do be aware of that and um, depending on what it is I may or may not cover what people have to say about the first episode but um, you know we're getting very very close to release at this point I do wonder how much more marketing they have left I'm assuming tomorrow with it being one week to go and the premiere they're going to put out something because it's a really notable kind of landmark of like this time next week you will have the show that sort of thing uh, and there's still stuff that they haven't really shown off too much. I'm assuming they're going to put out a trailer that at least does a little bit more to introduce Northern Water Tribe stuff. Um, they probably won't go too much in depth, but there are some kind of noted actors that are related to those last... Um, it, like noted characters at the very least that like they haven't had a chance to show off just because they're from the final episode so I'm wondering how much of that they'll really uh, get into but we're so close at this point that how much really more is there to say um other than that um uh just in relation to the analysis I did yesterday um some people were pointing out that hey uh, at this point in the video is that flopsy in the background and so what people are referring to is in this shot uh, of boomy you can see here behind these two kind of background characters there is this thing in the background and you can clearly see like okay horns yeah some sort of a face like thing and then a pretty big potential like body like that that was the the look of flopsy there was a big kind of like humpback basically uh going on here flopsy the gorilla goat um and people were like is that just flopsy my thoughts on this when i saw it was that like i looked at it and was like looking at the clip especially multiple times i think it's a statue of flopsy because obviously you see boomy say the avatar and the people in the background move a little bit but this stays stone still basically and then also if you just go across to the other side of boomy there's something similar that has that kind of like uh almost like shoulder kind of i suppose look over here you can't really make out a lot of what's going on here but it looks like there's maybe a matching one on the other side here um overall so uh maybe that's suggesting that um Flopsy um, in this version of the show died a while ago but Boomy remembers him with all these uh, statues and stuff like that and um, that would sort of make sense because it might be a lot of sort of CG budget to potentially put into animating a full-on new animal who is only really going to be significant for like 10 seconds and um, so just making a kind of statue background thing is maybe a little bit more efficient uh, with the time um, but I think people just wanted to, to know some thoughts on that so I do think it is meant to be a statue of Flopsy but I do think it is a statue not actual Flopsy but we'll have to wait and see obviously um, other than that, I suppose we have to get into some non-Netflix uh, Avatar news. So, some merchandise news here, uh, specifically here with Avatar Displates. So, I've talked about these a few times as they've added new uh, options for these metal posters. Um, and they have added some more. I think we have nine new um, images that you can get as an official Avatar Displate. And, of course, it is an official brand shop here so these are full-on from Nickelodeon they're not just randomly put up there 
although some of the selections of images are somewhat random. But the new ones I'm talking about here are some of these location ones. All nine of them are location related. So these, there's these new ones that are kind of more stylized, have a different art style to them. Uh, and then some just standard background uh, images as well. So I have these, I posted these up on Twitter for everyone to see. People seem quite interested in this. So the first four are from, um, what's it called? Like, uh, it's like the Geeky Travel or something like that. Uh, yeah, Geeky Travel Selection is what this one is. And there's four of these. Um, so first up, we have Agna Kel'a. This is the capital of the Northern Water Tribe. And you can see the art style is uh, it's more stylized, I think, than the, the typical art style of the show. In contrast with, you'll, you'll see the other group of uh, images that we have. But I think it looks really nice. The lighting on this one, I think, works uh, really well. And it gets across some of the, to me, really key details of Agna Kel'a. Then, Ember Island. Uh, I don't think this one looks as good just because I think with Ember Island I almost want to see maybe a little bit more of it than just the kind of like houses, the cottages type thing. Um, but it's still a nice image if you particularly like Ember Island. Um, then we have the Southern Air Temple which is my favourite of this group of four. I just love the colours and uh, the lighting I think on this one I think really really works for the Patola Mountain Range and then the temple itself. Um, it just was really, really striking, this one. Uh, and then we also have the Sun Warriors Ancient City, also. So, um, this is an interesting choice here. This is one where I feel the lighting is maybe a little bit potentially too much. It almost like obscures the image a little bit. But it is cool that the, the Sun Warriors get one of these uh, art pieces here. So, I'd like to see more key locations from Avatar done like this. Like an Omashu one, I think, would be very cool. Um, because it's a it's an interesting one and it's new art that we've never seen before. So uh, the the listings don't say who the artist is, other than that it is officially licensed Avatar art. So I guess it's just um, under listed under Avatar, kind of Paramount art, whatever Avatar Studios, whatever way you want to call it. But that's what's going on there. Then we have this group of four, which are just kind of background pieces of art. Um, this one is listed on the website as being Bossing Say, but I think very clearly it it doesn't look like Bossing Say. For one, surely the background should include one of the walls, one of the ringed walls of Bossing Say, and not a very clear look at mountains kind of outside wherever this is. Um, maybe it's a, a section of Bossing Say that I'm not super familiar with that I haven't seen in concept art before, but um, I don't really know what to make of this one. It's a bit weird. Um, then we have this one here, which is listed as Crescent Island, but I don't think, once again, it's actually Crescent Island. The Crescent Island Fire Temple is much taller than this, has many more tiers, and is sort of like, like much more built into kind of onto a mountain. Uh, whereas this one, as you can see, is much more in a, in a bit of an open area, it, it admittedly still mountainous. So I'm guessing this is just a different fire temple somewhere else in the Fire Nation. Um, also, you'll note the uh, the logo here. Um, one big, just standard Avatar logo, just randomly placed in these images uh, with the Legend of Aang instead of the Last Airbender. Now, admittedly, technically translated titles of this uses the last the Legend of Aang more than I think The Last Airbender is used, uh, from what I remember. Um, but still, it's, it's, an, it's an odd one that, that this is <laughs> what gets used overall. Um, then there's the Southern Air Temple itself, so two, two Southern Air Temple kind of images is kind of nice. Um, and then we also have actual Crescent Island, the actual Fire Temple inside uh, the entrance into the kind of Roku Sanctuary area is here. But what's with the logo placement on this one? Like right in the middle uh, on the top. Um, I think these ones would be nicer uh, either not having the logo or it being very small in one of the corners. Like I don't think it should be that big um, overall. Uh, and then last but not least, we also have, of course, the world map as a display, which I think is actually a really cool option to have. Um, so that's kind of cool. Final thing I'll just say about disc plates um, is that I, I do like them. I think they're very good quality. So if you like one of these images and want to get one, I would definitely recommend grabbing one. Uh, you can see there I have the Appa disc plate right there. That's what that is. 
Um, and I have another one uh, all the way over there. Um, but yeah, you can see they're, they're relatively expensive though because they are metal posters, but they do typically have quite a few offers on all the time. Like at the moment, Valentine's Day sale, 22% off one disc plate. So that's uh, available right now. And then they always have offers. Like if you sign up, that you get emails all the time saying 30% off, 35% off. So I would definitely say, wait until you can get a pretty good offer and you know go in on one of these if you want one because it's, it's pretty cool to have as like a high quality poster especially for some of this new art i think the four new pieces of art are very nice for the locations especially that southern air temple one but um that's that and then the final piece of news is this so deadline have this report here about layoffs at paramount so this obviously is it doesn't directly say anything about avatar studios but obviously avatar studios is under paramount and relates to nickelodeon which gets men mentioned in this article i believe the stuff that is sort of significant here is one it kind of it kind of highlights um downsizing at the studio they're kind of just trying to kind of combine a bunch of different bits and pieces together uh but it's it's a lot of like heads of this heads of that, vice president of this, executives, it's high up positions that are lost here. Um, so you'll note that when we get down to the kind of more, maybe Avatar slightly related one, at Nickelodeon, Liz Paulson, uh, Paulson uh, head of animation and live action casting and talent development for the network and studio content for third party platforms, what a title, uh, is leaving. The division's talent department is being decentralized, I hear. Uh, Nick's animation department has been significantly sig significantly impacted with close to 10 layoffs uh, on both coasts. So that's what they're kind of highlighting here. And this obviously gets into the idea of like, okay, is Liz Paulson, Paulson as the head of animation, does that relate to Avatar Studios, which is a separate studio, but Avatar is still a, a, a Nickelodeon property, but it's a Paramount property. What does it mean that Avatar Studios is its own separate studio? Um, you know, that that's where it gets very confusing to know if this has much of any impact on Avatar. Now, obviously, the overall idea here of quite a few high up positions being lost at Paramount has to have some sort of a trickle down impact. But it is likely not an impact big enough that, like, it puts the Avatar project in major threat because... They still need content for their Paramount Plus uh, streaming platform. And Avatar, from what they've said in previous comments, is something they place a lot of confidence in and something they're very hopeful about that it's been noted, I think, elsewhere. People who know the industry really well would note that Paramount has a really good profile when it comes to its kids' franchises like TMNT, Paw Patrol, Avatar. Dora the Explorer, those type of things. Like they're they're notable franchises. And they kind of feel that they have something there. And Avatar they they view as being in that same category. It's just getting built up again. And especially because like Avatar is going to become very popular again when we hit the 22nd and Netflix Avatar releases, even though yes, it's under Netflix, it's going to make Avatar more popular, which will draw people to wanting to watch the um, like original and stuff like that, which is available on Paramount uh, as well. Uh, and then if, if they have anything to say about uh, Avatar Studios in any way or near the launch of uh, Netflix Avatar, people will be very much reminded of that. That would be a good thing to build off the popularity. It seems like they have some sort of a marketing plan for later in the year to build up Avatar ahead of basically the 2025 kind of relaunch of the franchise so i don't think that stuff is just going to be scrapped or it, it, that this suggests any of that but obviously it's not good to hear this either i just think fundamentally i don't know enough about the structure and what any of these roles specifically do and because i don't really know much about avatar studios i don't think anyone really does it is so hard to know if this means anything for Avatar because it's not just specifically Paramount that this is happening to this is kind of entertainment industries across the board there are layoffs like everywhere in relation to streaming uh, animation video games all this sort of stuff is happening 
Um, but content is still going to have to be made. It's still going to have to come out. And like I said, I think they do have confidence in Avatar. That's why they gave that Mike and Brian basically Avatar Studios, which a lot of other franchises don't have their own separate like name of franchise studio. But Avatar does. That's a huge vote of confidence. And especially with the timing coming up, I can't see them doing anything that would affect what could be a major franchise kind of relaunch for them in the coming years. So um, I, all I would say is just that this doesn't mean the end of the world for Avatar or anything like that. Um, but I also don't really know what it means. Let, let me know in the comments for sure if, if you are a little bit more familiar what, with uh, interpreting some of this stuff and what this could actually mean. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to look at this and maybe be maybe a bit more worried than it maybe actually is. Obviously, it's never great to hear about layoffs, specifically a lot of layoffs, but um, I, it, I don't immediately jump and think that this means disaster for Avatar Studios content. But uh, I think that's everything I want to talk about in the video. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on uh, basically, yeah, yeah, Netflix Avatar. We're going to get some, I guess, re initial review impressions at some point tomorrow or the following day. I'm guessing there will be some sort of clip footage type stuff tomorrow also because it will mark one week to go. Um, the new disc plates, what are your thoughts on those? And of course, layoffs at Paramount. Do they mean anything for Avatar Studios? Let me know in the comments below. But uh, otherwise, that's been it. Thanks for watching and bye.